Hello again, my fellow pilots and my fellow aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today I'm going to speak about the smoke fumes and avionics smoke procedure. Avionics smoke procedure. You remember everybody if you need to memorize the procedure for engine fire, ABU fire, you need to remember isolations and fire extinguish, isolations and fire extinguish, okay? But if you need to remember the procedure for avionics smoke, you need to remember ventilation, then electrical shedding. Ventilation of the avionics smoke, you need to ventilate the smoke inside the avionics compartment. Then after that, if smoke still persists, you need to do electrical shedding. You need to take care, you need to take the aircraft into emergency electrical situation. Okay, everybody. Uh, ventilations and electrical shedding. Ventilations and electrical shedding for avionics smoke. Okay, so in this first part of our series regarding smoke, fumes, and the avionics smoke procedure, we are going to speak about we are going to speak about the location that the smoke may persist inside the aircraft. What location we may have smoke coming from? We may have smoke from the cabin, lavatory, crew rest compartment, avionics smoke, cargo compartment, air conditioning bay. Okay, everybody? So, some of these locations, you can easily recognize that the smoke coming from this location. And other, it is, diff it is difficult to uh, uh, recognize from where the smoke is really come from. Okay. So, as you can see here, everybody, we have here the smoke sources that are easier to locate because they have an ECAM action and or local warning. They are cargo, cargo smoke or smoke coming from cargo, smoke coming from lavatory, or smoke coming from the crew rest compartment, crew rest compartment. But what other three, three location? It is not easy to recognize where the smoke is coming from, where the smoke is coming from. It is maybe coming from avionics, air conditioning bay, or cabin equipment, or cabin equipment. Okay, everybody, or cabin equipment. So, on the other hand, the smoke sources that are more difficult to locate, which may or may not be covered by an ACAM alert, and that are considered the more difficult to deal with, avionics, air conditioning, and the cabin equipment. So, cargo, lavatory, and the crew rest compartment, it is easy to deal with and it's easy to recognize smoke coming from th those locations. But on the other side, avionics, air conditioning and the cabin equipment, it is difficult to deal with that smoke and it is difficult to, relo uh, to locate and recognize the uh, location of the smoke, the location of the smoke. Okay, everybody? Okay, so as you can see here, everybody, until 2002, the quick reference handbook contained six independent smoke procedure. Six independent smoke procedure. Three for cargo lavatory and the crew rest compartment, and three for avionics, air conditioning, and the, cab and the cabin equipment. So this was a hectic process. The crew had to decide which one to apply according to the suspected smoke source. Cargo lavatory, crew rest compartment, avionics, air condition, equipment and the cabin equipment. So in practice, it is often difficult to discriminate between the last three sources of fire, avionics, air conditioning bay and the cabin equipment. Avionics, air conditioning bay and the cabin, and cabin equipment, it is difficult to discriminate between these sources of smoke and fire. So the procedure applicable to these sources were therefore merged into the single smoke fumes avionics smoke procedure. Nowadays, the procedure applicable to these sources were therefore merged into smoke fumes and avionics smoke procedure. 
thus relieving the crew from having to flip back and forth through the QRH and from repeating action in case of switch to another suspected smoke source. So the first three source, cargo, crew rest compartment and lavatory, easier to trace and have kept their own dedicated procedure. So now the smoke coming from avionics, air condition and the cabin equipment are merged into single procedure, smoke fumes and avionics smoke procedure and avionics smoke procedure. Okay, everybody. So in this article, we will describe how the Airbus smoke fumes avionics smoke procedure was developed and it will then explain its philosophy, therefore, by providing guidelines into the decision making process from the early stage of the procedure. Identify the smoke is very important because if smoke propagates, it may lead to a fire and maybe in short minutes the smoke may lead to a fire so in any event of a smoke everybody land as soon as possible message will come land as soon as possible message will come okay so the procedure takes into account three decisive challenge common to non-immediately identified sources of smoke we have the shortage of time the difficulty to identify the smoke source and the need for two ways cockpit cabin crew communication. Okay, everybody. We are short in time if smoke is coming and a smoke situation may propagate to a fire in as short as eight minutes. Okay, everybody. So in a smoke situation, timing is critical. Studies show that a fire may become uncontrollable in as little as eight minutes. And in this case, the flight crew may have as little as 15 minutes to bring the aircraft on ground. So land as soon as possible is coming very fast in this procedure. For this reason, the smoke fumes, avionics, smoke, a cam and the QRH paper procedure both start with land as soon as possible. Land as soon as possible. In the frame of this procedure, the land as soon as possible message requests the crew to be prepared for a diversion. And the immediate landing term found in QRH paper procedure mean accept exceptional circumstance. You can ditch the aircraft. You need to land even if there is a tailwind. And you need to land even if there is no airport. <laughs> okay, everybody. So here, the immediate landing term found in the QRH for the avionics smoke procedure you need to accept exceptional circumstance such as a tailwind landing, ditching of airport landing, of airport landing. Okay, everybody. Okay, so this was our first session in a series of uh, maybe three or four session. Okay, on avionics smoke, avionics smoke and the fumes procedure. Please stay tuned for my next session that I will speak on this procedure and on how to deal with the avionics smoke fumes procedure. And always remember, as I told you, always remember ventilations and electrical shedding. Ventilations and electrical shedding for avionics fumes and the smoke procedure. On the other hand, engine fire, ABU fire, you need to do isolations and fire extinguish. Also cargo. Okay, everybody. Isolations and fire extinguish. Isolations and fire extinguish. But for avionics smoke, ventilations and electrical shedding. Ventilations and electrical shedding. Okay, everybody. Thank you always for your good listening. And please stay tuned for my next session on avionics smoke procedure. Avionics smoke procedure. From Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Thank you and goodbye.